can we do that? Well, today is all about uh, volunteers and volunteer appreciation. And, uh, you know, there are so many different areas in which people volunteer. Uh, and it's not just what you see here on a Sunday or um, what you see happening during a service. It is throughout the week. It is including people who are disciple-making out there in the communities, who are serving in communities, um, serving neighbors, serving in the workplace, um, taking the gospel of the kingdom, the good news, uh, and serving with love uh, freely. And so a definition of a volunteer is that you don't get paid for the work of the ministry. It is... It is the is it the Pareti principle. Eighty percent of the work gets done by twenty percent of the people. It's the eighty twenty principle. Eighty percent of the work gets done by twenty percent of the people who give so much of themselves to make it happen. So the the reality is that there's nothing we could do without everyone adding their flavor and uh as it die lekker nie ons gaan bietjie later praat oor die message maar as dit die lekker al die flavors wat in die huis is die nee and so uh, say to the the person next to you be the curry be the curry you add your flavor i add my flavor and together we'll be the curry Is it not a lekker thing, nie? To realize that I don't have to do this alone because Lord, the Lord knows, the Lord knows. Even though he tried to preach on his own, I can do that part. But all the other parts, I can't do any of that. And uh, it's such a blessing to have you. I want, um, I just want to play a little clip for you of um, some impact that um, volunteers have made in people's lives um there's just we've got a video clip and then we have some some live maybe people that want to share just the impact that has been made in their lives have you come in and there's no one to greet you or no one to uh, to say hello what a difference it makes to have volunteers And how that affected me was, you know, in an emotional state, my work, I almost walked out of my work of frustration. And at home, I was, I was a dead man, but I was living there. And I didn't know that my children was also, you know, lost a grandfather and a grandmother. And I was so selfish. But when I came to the bereavement, uh, they were very chilled. I thought that, you know what, I'm just going to be in the bereavement just to do the bereavement and get it over and done with. But when I came there, there was a, there was a, there was a lovely atmosphere. They, they were like forceful. And, you know, they gave me space to, to you know what, to, to, just to be me. And as a man, you know, I didn't want them to disclose how I feel. And eventually, you know, um, certain brothers opened up a little bit. And it gave me an opportunity also to open up what God was inside of me. And how the bereavement helped me was when Pastor Derek said something very profound one night. He said, out of the essence, uh, beauty arise. And that just struck me and that just you know, opened up my heart to, you know, to, to share how I feel. And the more I said how I feel, the more healing I received and the more you know, they can deposit in me. And for me, that was, that was amazing. My whole life has changed as well, the way I am with my kids as well. I'm more sensitive to them as well. It's not just my dad or my mom that died, but it's also their grandparents that died, and I opened up my heart to them as well. And, you know, during the grieving period and all of that, it was, they were really helpful. You know, they checked up how I am. You know, they even formulated a... Uh, a WhatsApp group just to talk to one another how how we are and how we're coping and you know even me now I can I can also you know encourage other people that is going through the same similar thing. I appreciate the most about the volunteers and the youth is that 
no matter how your day has been, they always cheer you up by making you laugh or by doing silly things and like you can always go to them when you need to speak about something personal and they give the best advice when you need it the most. Before I joined the youth, like I wouldn't really speak, I wouldn't really speak to people, go up to people, introduce myself. Now when I'm at youth and I see new members, I would actually go up to them and introduce myself and be like, hi, ah, it's nice to see you here and thank you for coming. And I learned to laugh more and I'm actually good at jokes now that I joined the youth. To those youth volunteers who helped her to be good at jokes now. There's nothing, there's nothing worse than being alone and uh, not having someone around to support. Imagine if the only people that will be around to support you were paid staff. When we, uh, we'll speak about volunteers a little bit uh, uh, later on in the service, but the impact that every single one makes in contributing who they are. So when you when you're planted into a body when god plants you in a spiritual house with a vision it is not just your gifts and talents it's 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 the whole package god puts you here and that means you give of your your time your energy your gifts, your talents, your resources. Thank you. Good morning, church. Um, this morning, I'm going to just share and encourage about discovery groups and how discovery groups has impacted my life. On the third of, it uh, goes a bit back. I didn't want to come stand when the, when the recycled teenagers were here. So you might just think I'm one of them. So um, <laughs> on the third of uh, October, 1993, Pastor Yuan preached the word in the evening service. I came to stand up front here. On the 5th of October, um, sorry, at that stage I had lots of questions, you know, transitioning. I'm accepting Christ into my life. What does it mean? And the road forward, what's it going to be like? And um, the counselor uh, then encouraged me that somebody will contact you later in the week. Later in that week, I was contacted contacted by a gentleman by the name of Moos van Rienen, and um, he invited me and a friend of mine, Gavin Lowe, that um, brought me to church that evening. He invited us into that time we called it a home cell, and um, in that home cell, foundations were laid in our lives, and um, I'm here to encourage you, if you accept Christ into your life or you have questions, contact the office. Find out by them what, how and where you can slot in, uh, how you can connect with people. Because those people that I met then, they walked uh, a road with me, they discipled me, they guided me, they taught me. They brought me to a level of maturity where I, in return, could go out and um, start cell groups by my, um, with, with the help and with the help of Pastor Gerald in the Alces River area. I'm currently, I'm currently myself and my wife, we with a group of, we about 10 married couples that get together informally. We don't have a structured um, setup, um, but when we come together, whether it's going after service to the Dani Ice uh, uh, Park, just to go relax there with our families, but to spend time, encourage each other, or whether we go away uh, for a weekend, every year, for the past 12 years, every year we go away for a weekend and we impart in each other's lives, but we also get together on a weekly, on a, on a monthly basis, at least once a month, where we encourage each other. And um, we got a, a theme or principle taken from James Dobson, is uh, we encourage this couple to touch each other lovingly 22 times a day, date once a week, go away quarterly. And we've imply, uh, applied that to our lives, and our marriages has grown tremendously. And as we impact each other, we are then allowed to impact others around us. And 
the key groups, the cell groups, um, with the transition, of course, the Alma now um, for the new year. Um, we casting, we casting our nets also on the water now for as Pastor Derry comes in for the Kelt River, um, Kelt River, East River, Blackheath area. So, Pastor Alma, I'll be available after the service if there's people that want to slot into our cell groups in in the Kelt River area. You know, I don't think we can even begin to touch all the areas that our people volunteer in. Some areas that will never be seen. And now and then uh, you hear about something because um, recognition happens from outside. Even uh, Pastor Derek has just reminded me that this is a, the 16 days focus on no violence against women and children. And we have so many people involved in the community serving in that area, counseling women. We have people out of this congregation that are volunteering to counsel and to serve, some of them even out of the police stations and out of rape crisis centers that are volunteering and serving there. This is not about a lighthouse thing. This is about representing our Father in that which He's placed us in and gifted us in. But we just prepared a little clip for you just to show you some of the, the extra benefits of uh, being a, a volunteer. So let's watch that screen. Those that are here are here because God has planted them, and they serve out of a willing heart. So, what you have in your hand there is a spice. Can you tell what it is? Can you tell what spice it is? Well, it will depend. We have different spices out there. Um, but the truth is, if that was totally sealed, if that packet was totally sealed, like 100% sealed, would you be able to know for sure what spice you took? No, you wouldn't. Why? Because for a spice to be revealed, it must be exposed. Right, so... We're asking you, especially if your packet looks like yellowish, really yellowish, don't open that. Because that will make a chamors. Uh, we can still handle some cinnamon on our carpets, but body can also handle it. Ne? So um, you don't have to open it now. But the point is, every one of those spices are good for you. Did you know that? You want to speak about the benefits of cinnamon? Come speak to my mother. She will tell you all the wonderful things cinnamon can do for you and of ginger and of all these wonderful uh, spices. They're actually all very good for you. But it's a brave person that can just chew on ginger all day. Isn't it? Um, what it takes... What it takes is for you to add your flavor. 
and your flavor. So when, when, when God makes a curry, he gives different people different flavors to add. And a curry is, in essence, a mixture of spices. Isn't it? Die van julle wat lekker curry maak. If you get something called a curry spice, it's actually a mixture of spices already. But a curry is a mixture of spices. And we want to encourage you today to be the curry. To be the curry. To add your flavor. There was a sign that went up um, for people to be to be a blood donor. Be a volunteer blood donor was the sign. Be a volunteer blood donor. And some clever person wrote under volunteer, it's the best kind. Because if you're going to be a blood donor, being a volunteer blood donor is the best kind. You don't want to have to not volunteer blood. You want to be a volunteer blood donor. And so we are not going to be asking you today to, to, to give your blood involuntarily. It is a voluntary action. It is a voluntary action. But I want you to get a perspective. We are in a dangerous place as a ministry. Any ministry is in a dangerous place. In that if we're really good if we re listen no more, no more till a more later. If we're really good at raising up volunteers, okay, you must concentrate now because this is a scary, scary truth. If we as a ministry are very good, very good at raising up volunteers, then it doesn't matter that we've heard from God as to what we do. I'm going to say it again, just for Auntie Pat. If we as a ministry, or any ministry for that matter, if our expertise is raising up volunteers, making you feel guilty for not volunteering, or motivating you so much that you can't help yourself but volunteer, if we're very good at that, we do run the danger of not having to hear from God. Because with a lot of volunteers, we can go in any direction and we can get anything done, whether we've heard from God or not. That's what happened at the Tower of Babel, by the way. It wasn't about hearing from God. It's about getting enough people on board to a task. And so, in a sense, I'm not trying to get you to volunteer in our programs. In a sense, I'm asking you to hear from God. Because that is the safest way. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, we know this passage of Scripture very well. So, let's just read a few verses. As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head, which is Christ, cannot say to the feet, which is us humans, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unrepresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God... Say this with me. But God has put the body together. Let's say that together. But God has put the body together. One more time. But God has put the body together. Giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. 
Now, we've been speaking about love. And next week we will continue even on this vein and speaking specifically about this. I want you to notice the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, follows directly after this chapter. This is the context in which we are to understand 1 Corinthians 13, and we'll speak about that next week. But the context in which we understand loving each other is an understanding that God has placed each one in the body, in their specific place for his specific purpose. You are baptized into the body of Christ. You understand that? You are baptized into the body of Christ. You are also, if God has placed, placed you here, you have been placed by God in a spiritual house. So you have been baptized into the body of Christ and you've been placed by God. If this is where God has planted you, you've been planted, placed by God in a spiritual house. God has placed you in time and in space. In this moment of history, in this part of the world, in this specific context of where you've been placed in the body of Christ, God has placed you here at this time, at this place, for His purposes. Do you believe that? So God has placed you where you are. Say that. God has placed me where I am. Has God placed you in the body? Has God placed you in the body? So God has placed me where I am, with your particular gifts, with your particular calling, with your particular training, with your particular experience, with your particular ability, God has placed you where you are in the body. He's appointed you to be there at this time in history. At this moment of what God is doing in the earth today, with your particular set of skills and abilities, God has placed you. And you add your value. Your particular value of you as an individual is added to the value of what the body has. So your individual value is added to the corporate value. And that is the understanding of the context of loving one another. That we understand everyone has need of each other. I, I am compelled to love you because I understand that God has placed you in the body and I have needed you. And who you are, let's say that little packet that of spice that you have represents who you are. That who you are must be revealed. Who you are must be exposed. Who you are, your flavor must be added to the mix. And that is not now moving away from trying to, trying to get you to volunteer. I'm moving you to a different reality. This is not about you volunteering for our programs to keep our ministry alive. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. This is about you being who God has made you to be and placed you in the place He's placed you for the specific flavor that you are to add. And who you are is really, truly displayed when you are added to the mix. In ons maak die kari saam. Be the kari. This doesn't come by manipulation. This comes by revelation. You adding your flavor and our understanding of who God has made you with your particular gifts and abilities, 
doesn't come by someone manipulating you to be part of their program. This comes by revelation. And in a family, you've, if you've been placed here by God, if you've been planted in this spiritual house, you're part of a family, and any family takes responsibility. Do you know that I'm a volunteer? Do you know that? I'm a volunteer. I'm a volunteer father. I don't get paid for being a father. Do I? Who gets paid for being a father? No, no. Fatherhood is a responsibility that you understand from how God has placed you and where God has placed you to raise sons. That's not because someone's manipulating me to volunteer to take care of these four gorgeous kids. It's nothing to do with understanding of volunteering. It's a different understanding. No one pays me for it. And what a ridiculous notion to think I should be paid for it. I'm understanding a responsibility. And those who aren't fathers don't take that responsibility. And then you get those few that are foster parents because they get paid for it and they're the, they're the worst kind. Aren't they? The worst kind. If you'll take foster care, it's because the, the state will pay you a certain amount per child. That's the worst kind. But everyone in the family carries responsibility, don't we? We all carry the vision of the family. We all carry the vision in the house. We all contribute to what's needed in the family. We all take family responsibility. Don't we, Alyssa? Alyssa May takes fam family responsibility. Part of her responsibility is picking up the dog poop. And, and we, we, we're raising her up in taking responsibility, those one of them. But let me tell you, why God places you in family and responsibility is because you grow best through service. You grow best through service. And this is about our Father maturing us. This is about our Father bringing us into the fullness of His likeness being revealed through us, the corporate man, the corporate body of Christ. And the way that happens, the way it's going to happen in the earth, is when every part contributes and comes to maturity. And so God wants you to come to maturity. How best do you mature? Through service. You develop your gift. And God places you in relationship with the family, with mentors that will speak into your life that can help you come to maturity, but it's through serving. And I should have brought my bungee cord. How many of you bungeed before? Bungee cord. Have you seen that bungee cable? It's about so thick, and it can take a, quite a heavy, heavy load. But it's made up of tiny little threads, tiny little rubber strands that are all bound together. Have you seen that bungee cord from close up? So one little plastic, one little rubber band that's, that's like a millimeter thick. How much weight will that take? One millimeter rubber band. It's not going to take much, right? But when you weave those rubber bands together, it makes a rope that thick. And it can take a 120 kilogram man. Jumping off a bridge 150 meters high. Because the strength is each one's contributing towards the whole. Each one's contributing towards the, the whole. And this is how God places us in a body. It's not just about you shining. It's not about you catching the shine. It's not even about you getting recognition. But let me tell you, if you're not in the body, you don't add your strength to the body, nor do you have strength. If you don't add your flavor to the mix, if you don't add your strand, Scripture speaks about a three-chord strand that is not easily broken. If you don't add your strand, not only do you rob the body of the strength of your gift, but you rob yourself of the strength of the body. And that's just who did that. So where God has placed you is 
It's got to do with His purposes. God wants to live personally through you. God wants to live His life personally through you. And He's chosen you, your specific set of circumstances, your specific gifts, your specific talents. He wants to reveal Himself, His nature through you in the body, in those gifts. And what we do when we surrender, when we volunteer, if you want to, if you surrender, you surrender yourself to God to fully live through you as He's created you to be placed in the body in that way. You surrender yourself to, for God to say, live through me. Remember, that is what love is. Jesus surrendering his will to his Father and says, I don't do anything of myself. So if we are surrendering who we are to the Father, he lives through you. He lives in you and wants to be seen through you through the outlet that you are. Can you understand me? You are a specific outlet that God can only live personally through someone in that context because you are uniquely the ma way the, made the way you are. So in that specific outlet, God wants to live personally through you and you're the only one that can give God that access. It's about giving yourself to Him to inhabit so He can live through you as He intended. So as I wrap up, this is not about ministry volunteer raising. This is not about us coming up with a good idea and say, let's raise volunteers, let's, let's put volunteers together and not hear from God. Just do, there's many ministries that are doing that very well. That have great ways of raising up volunteers, and I don't know when last they've heard from God. Because they don't need to. They've actually got a bunch of volunteers that are making things happen. But we're saying, hear from God, where God has placed you, surrender to God, where God has placed you and what He has given to be revealed through you so God can live through you as you display the nature and character of your Father in those areas and those ways. Find places in which you can serve. Find ways in which God wants your flavor to come out. A spiritual house in which we can mature by surrendering self to Him and serving one another to see each other come to maturity and the whole body of Christ come to maturity. That's what God placed us in. I'll say that again. God's placed us in a spiritual house in which we individually mature by surrendering ourselves to Him to reveal Himself through us. And by serving one another in bringing each other, edifying, encouraging each other to come to maturity so that the flavor of Christ can be fully revealed in why He's placed us in this spiritual house. Sua, sua. Flate, flate. This is too early. <laughs>